It's Ask the Dietitian with Sally Sawaya from Sally's Diet Right. Sally Sawaya, welcome. Thank you. So how can we get in touch with you at Sally's Diet Right, Sally Sawaya? Uh, Sally's Diet Right. The right is spelled R-I-T-E on my Facebook page or website. Same thing, sallysdietright.com. And what kind of things can you can you help people with? Uh, with their questions, with anything related to nutrition, dieting, uh, certain benefits of foods, uh, pregnancy, uh, sports nutrition, uh, childhood obesity. A lot of kids come uh, ah. to my clinic. So, yeah, lots of everything. Is related it hard to, to get kids to eat healthy? Uh, if the environment at home is uh, helps them, then it's really easy. But okay. if their environment is all junk and snack foods, then it's a bit hard. But you know, at schools, they sell junk food. I know, and that's where we should, we should start. I mean, it starts at home, then extends to school. Because even if at home you don't have that stuff, and then suddenly you see all your friends eating it. True, mm. true. Yeah. Yeah, you want it's it. It's an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. There's a really easy way to get kids to eat food. I remember when I was a little boy, there was one thing that made me eat it every single time, whatever it was. What is it? Do, 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 train. Train's coming. <laughs> open the tunnel. I used to open my mouth every time. <laughs> Even if it was something disgusting that I didn't like. Oh, my God. This is so funny. It was, it was a very good thing. It, it does work. Yeah. yeah, it does. Or the airplane. Different uh, the modes airplane. of transportation. Yes. <laughs> so, Sally Sawyer from Sally's Diet Right. If you have a question, 03-887-000. You've come with your top five things this morning. Yes, Gavin. It's uh, five nutrition tips that help reduce breast cancer risk. Oh, because it's October, Breast Cancer yes. Awareness Month. Okay. All right. So let's go through these uh, the foods that um, can actually reduce your risk of, of getting breast cancer. Number five. The tips. Uh, the first tip is maintain a healthy weight. Okay. Because overweight uh, women are thought to be at the high risk for breast cancer because they can make uh, the, the fat cells can make extra estrogen, which can cause cell growth, and then this extra growth will increase the risk of breast cancer. So just maintain a healthy weight. It's very important. Number four. Limit your fat intake. Now, a diet low in fat, again, reduces the risk of breast cancer, but you have to really go low, less than 30 grams, which is about six teaspoons of oil. So just go low fat in everything that you buy also. Six teaspoons of oil in how long? During the day. During one day. Yeah, so you have to cook with minimal amounts of oil. Don't add too much oil or, or fats. Yeah. And avoid that saturated fat, definitely. Okay. Ways you can re reduce your chance of getting breast cancer, number three. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, more than five servings a day or more than five cups a day. Because, you know, breast cancer is less common in, uh, in uh, like, countries that, that have lots of plant-based foods. Really? Yeah, because it's full of fiber and it's full of vitamins and minerals, antioxidants. Mm. So snack as much as possible on fruits, try new vegetables, uh, incorporate new vegetables in your salads like asparagus, broccoli, you know, just uh, make it uh, a variety. Lovely. Number two? Uh, mix up your protein options because some research, they link uh, red, eating red meat with breast cancer, but it's more oh, really? the processed meat, you know, those uh, smoked foods which are high in fat okay. and, and salt and nitrate, you know. Like, like bacon is supposed to be yes. really bad for you. Yes, bacon and these uh, smoked uh, And those sausages. Meats, what, those luncheon German, meats. What, what are those German sausages called? Hot dogs. Yeah. yeah. They're supposed to be really, really bad. It's like smoking 40 cigarettes or something. Yeah, yeah those smoked foods are really bad for the risk of cancer. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, try to limit or eliminate. Um, and uh, vary your protein sources. Go for more, more for fish, go for beans, uh, lentils, eggs, yes, and low-fat dairy. Mm -hmm. And ways to cut your risk of getting breast cancer, the number one thing that you can do? Uh, limit your alcohol intake to a barest minimum. This is the first the first tip that, the, that we can give. Like compared to women who don't drink at all, the women who drink even uh, three, ta three alcoholic drinks per week are at a 15% higher risk. Really? So try to keep it for a minimum. Don't exceed like two uh, glasses of alcohol during the week. Okay. Sally Sawaya is from Sally's Diet Right. If you have a question, 03-887-000. What would you like to ask Sally Sawaya this morning? Now it's Ask the Dietitian with Sally Sawaya from Sally's Diet Right. 03-887-000. Your questions this morning for Sally Sawaya. So somebody says, good morning all. I would like to ask Sally, how much protein should I eat uh, to see some mus muscle definition? So uh, she's a 27-year-old woman. She does CrossFit three to four times a week, and she wants to see more muscle definition what mm. what kind of protein and how much protein should she eat well it actually not only depends on age but it depends on the on her weight yeah so in order to calculate properly I need to know her weight like CrossFit is a really high intensity workout <clears throat> so she may need protein more than usual 
like about 70 grams for a 60 kilo woman so just keep in mind like i mean it's really doable with food like 70 grams if you just have a piece of steak or chicken breast at like 30 to 40 grams so just two of those yeah or no you can or have one, one because you're having else. an egg for example has seven grams a glass of milk or yogurt has eight grams oh, okay half a cup of beans has like nine grams so lots of our food is really really rich in proteins just incorporate protein in every meal in adequate quantities and then you will have the that definition okay uh, another question says what are the best um, okay diet sweeteners we can't really we can't really talk yeah. about brands yeah yeah we cannot talk about brands but there are many kinds of sugar substitutes in the market um, all of them are safe in limited amounts so the safety has been uh, proven but the, we need to have them in limited amounts but it's actually not like a magic bullet for weight loss mm. You know, because if you're eating lots of uh, uh, sugar-free stuff, it doesn't mean that it's calorie-free. So it may help people who are going on a diet and diabetic people. However, don't go overboard with these things because they actually contain other things like fat and contain calories. So just don't depend on them as your sole source of, of uh, nutrition and when you are dieting. Mm. Someone else is asking about cramps. Um, thank God Sally came. What's the best medicine <laughs> or what can you do to reduce cramps? Actually, if you ask a doctor, uh, the cramps uh, have many unknown reasons. So these are muscle cramps. Muscle like, cramps. Yeah. So not all of them are related to nutrition, but some. We always recommend having two minerals that are important for muscle function, which is potassium, number one. Bananas. Uh, bananas, potatoes, uh, tomatoes, and lots of fruits and vegetables have potassium. And the second mineral that we advise is magnesium. Mm -hmm. Magnesium is found in green leafy vegetables and in legumes and beans, like uh, beans, lentils, uh, hummus, chickpeas, and these things. So, but if it's really, really too much, just... Uh, visit your doctor he may prescribe extra supplements of these uh, minerals too mm -hmm. um what else um someone was asking about the pros and cons of going on a 22 day vegan diet i think beyonce did this and then it became a thing yeah. So, so first people of all, go vegan for 22 days. What is the vegan diet? Uh, vegan diet, uh, Gavin, is like a vegetarian diet. They don't eat meat and fish and uh, chicken, but they also don't eat any meat products or like dairy and eggs. Oh. So everything that comes from animals, they don't eat it. Now, a pure, I mean, the vegetarians are normally a healthy. They are healthier because uh, normally the foods are lower in cholesterol. You have more vitamins, minerals intake, so it's actually healthy. However, still Strict vegetarianism, which is vegan, you may lack some vitamins and minerals, so it's a bit has because you're not eating the milk products. Yes. so you need to get calcium from another source. Calcium, vitamin D is at risk. Yeah. Vitamin B12 is the riskiest one because vitamin B12 is only available in animal foods and animal products, mm. you know. And protein may be at risk. Zinc, uh, iron, iron deficiency, anemia. What if you take a multivitamin? That's what we all, always advise for vegans, especially. They need to take a multivitamin mineral supplement and visit a dietitian to help with their meal planning so they don't lack too many stuff but what this person is saying basically to do this for 22 days does it have any benefits if you're only doing it for 22 days i think it will be a, a lifestyle is much better but if you like incorporate uh, dairy a low-fat dairy and fish it will be great mm -hmm. somebody asking about bread uh how much can we give our children of whole grain bread and oat bread is uh is it too much fiber for them kids need to eat fiber too a little bit less than adults, but they need the fiber too for a healthy stomach, for a healthy digestive system. But instead of going like, you know, for the extra fiber breads or bran breads, just go for the whole grain one because mm -hmm. the benefits, the vitamins and minerals and the healthy fibers are in the outer, uh, outer seed, you know? Yeah, the uh, shell. In the covering, of. Yeah, yeah, in the covering of the... Uh, so don't go for the flour with added bran. Just go for the whole grain or whole wheat variety, which is really very beneficial from them. And if you start early, then they will grow up with this good habit, you know? Yeah, they'll get used to that kind of bread. True, true. I had some, some bread the other day, and it, it looked really healthy. It had all the little sort of nut things on, on the outside. It was brown. And then I read the ingredient list. It had sugar in it. Yeah. yeah. Why have but they I put think sugar they add in sugar in brown bread. bread? But if it's the last ingredient, Gavin, it's just a sprinkle. No, no, it was the, it second, the, the second oh, ingredient. That's really, um, yeah. But, but why would you Not put good. sugar in brown bread? I, th I thought I was being healthy. Yeah. It gives it like a crusty, uh, it gives the crust a certain uh, shiny... Uh, 
Mr. I don't want shiny crusts. <laughs> I want to be healthy. Okay. I, d I did find another one actually yeah. um, that, that didn't have sugar. Yes, great. So the, the ingredient is so, so small, it's so hard to read. I know, they do it on purpose, mm. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but um, speaking of bread, a couple more questions about bread. Somebody was asking basically the same thing can we feed our three year old kid brown bread with fiber? Yes, you same, can. Same yeah. thing, yes, sure. Okay. And people talking about maru, chia bread, chia seed bread, and protein bread yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you what do you feel about these breads and what is protein bread <laughs> yeah the protein bread is a bread that's low in carbohydrates and uh, higher in protein so it's good for option for people trying to increase their protein intake especially mm. like the vegan uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, diet um, um, Though people don't like the taste very much, it doesn't taste really like bread. Yeah. That's the only uh, concern about protein bread. And what's it called? Where did you get it from? Uh, all the bakeries have high protein breads now, Gavin. Oh. All the big ones, at least, they have high protein breads. Okay. It's a good option. You know, as long as you vary your, your bread sources, it's also nice. Like maru from time to time is great because it is a whole grain, but yeah. it has a lot of salt. So be careful about the salt. They have sodium, light sodium ones. Oh, I've that's seen great. that. Yeah, that's like great. a diety sort of one. Yeah, choose the ones with low sodium. And someone asked about chia bread. Yeah, chia seed bread. Uh, I've had that, by the way. It's nice. Yeah, it's no? good. Chia is a very, very healthy uh, seed. It's actually a concentrated source of omega-3 fats, that's fiber, antioxidants, calcium, and proteins. So if it's added to bread, bread it adds those benefits to bread. Mm -hmm. And it gives a feeling for a fullness, satiety. Yeah. So you may feel fuller for longer, so that's great. Um, and one more one, question. Okay. <laughs> Just because it's the weekend and people are having people over, and Nadesha had a really good question. She's asking about what are some light dips that you can serve with, like, carrots and, uh, and cu cucumbers as a light yeah, snack. A, a yeah. dip that's that's actually like a healthy, healthy. Dip. healthy yeah. dip. So you can do a, an avocado dip. Oh, yummy. Uh, yes. I love it. Like, uh, like a guacamole. Guacamole. Sort of thing. Yeah. But do it at home. You just add a little bit of uh, onions, uh, tomatoes, a little bit of lemon, and you just smash the avocado. Yeah, and now good luck finding <laughs> an avocado that's actually ripe, though. It's very oh, difficult. But this is the thing. My friend actually adds laban to uh, to avocado and then good makes idea. like a really interesting mm. mix, too. Uh, we have the hummus. Hummus is really healthy Lovely. dip. And then the lemon. Well, Sally Sawyer from Sally's Diet Right, thank you for coming in today. Welcome. How can we get Sally. in touch with you? Sally's Diet Right on Facebook with the right spelt how? R-I-T-E. <laughs>